The MPDSR, the Matana Debt Audit, actually started in 2013. Uh, is is an aftermath of the blueprint that was developed for the reduction of maternal and child mortality, and um, which happened in 2012. And uh, uh, looking at the blueprint, it was quite obvious that a lot of women are dying in, in Nigeria and Lagos inclusive and that we needed to actually look at the causes of those deaths, whether they are community based, they are facility based or policy based. We relied on to MPDSR because we realized that um, a proper implementation of that program was going to provide us an avenue, an opportunity, you know, to uh, come up with data especially if the process is well implemented, accurate data that would, again, give us opportunity to make, you know, to, to guide public actions, come up with appropriately designed programs driven by data. And the MPDSR program gives us that platform and to ensure that whatever planning we're doing, we're not planning in the deck, but we're planning with figures and figures from the state. For me, uh, most critical interventions in the last 10 years or so, uh, having been in the player for a much longer time, have, you know, really uh, changed the narrative about how we look at maternal mortality and neonatal death. It has been one of those programs that you look back and say it was what they fought because uh, the whole aim or the goal of the NPDSR program is to improve quality and you're definitely sure that once you improve quality, you will reduce maternal and perinatal deaths and not just that, you'll keep your patients coming back because a beautiful facility might sell a patient to come the first time but it's the quality that ensures that the patient keeps coming back and so with the NPDSR program we believe we'll be able to do that. The deaths have reduced uh, per facility and across but more importantly quality of care has been better. Let me just quickly tell you a scenario. Some years ago, if you were unbooked, if you came in as an unbooked patient, you came in, you know, you didn't register, you came in as, as an emergency. The thought was, listen, if you died, so what? And yes, some of them came in very bad. But we now have evidence that, listen, if you don't follow protocols and guidelines and provide, you know, attempt to provide appropriate service and appropriate care for this so-called bad case and you can salvage the number of them. We've been able to develop protocols in the beginning when we started the MPDSR program. We just realized that people were managing based on what they saw the people doing, not necessarily because they were best practices. So we've been able to standardize our protocols across our facilities. And it's been a lot of capacity building on the part of the individual health worker. It's helped the health worker to get better because you realize that the fact that it's a no name, no blame program means that a health worker can come and say, okay, this is what I did and be able to learn from whatever shortfalls or shortcomings he might have had in managing that particular client. The kind of referral pathway and protocol we have right now is where the referring hospital will get in touch with the hospital you would like to refer the patient to. And there's that communication to ensure that when the patient gets there, uh, the bed space is available. They're already waiting for that client to come. So we don't keep tossing our patients from one facility to the next. It's the human resource challenge is there. That's the major one. We've also had issue of, you know, brain drain. People after, you know, going through a series of training, training is very, it's quite expensive. That's the time they needed to go to to overseas for greener pastures. But what we do in, in terms of that is to train more 
and encourage them to have assistance and ask the hospitals to probably uh, give us about two or three representatives, not just depending on one person. We're heavily cultural um, society, and you find some of them going to faith-based or traditional birth attendance, and by the time they realize what the issues are, the referrals are coming late. And of course, this is Lagos, uh, you know, uh, we get a number of people coming to Lagos every day. So when you, even when you feel that you've done a lot of a lot of community sensitization, you've spoken to people, you have people who come from outside Lagos who come and dilute that impact that you think you've made. We've had a series of um, breakdowns of uh, on our DHIS platform, the, the, uh, you know, during the digitalization process. It actually caused uh, some level of data loss at a time. It will interest you to know that, uh, yes, despite the fact that a lot of programs suffered during the uh, COVID, as tough as things were, we innovated to ensure that our women, we, can, we didn't abandon them. Even though we didn't know they are still talking about Now that COVID wave, is it the third or fourth wave is gradually a bit, we are going to again go back with renewed vim and vigor to continue the good things that we've been doing the last couple of years. The NPDSR program has been able to um, open our eyes to the fact that this, the traditional death attendants are uh, they're part of the health system. They might not be part of the orthodox health system, but they are part of the health system and work with them to ensure that they understand what their limitations are, they understand what the danger signs are, and they're able to refer patients on time and have some linkages with the general hospitals so that that referral is also smooth for people who go through that pathway. In 2015, we had a lot of partners, Mama Ye inclusive, um, uh, UNFPA, coming on board to assist us because uh, we needed a lot of both financial and technical support at that time. And uh, they assisted us. It's a partnership in Lagos State. We, we, we are not that kind of government that thinks that we can do all. We understand what the limitations that we have with our budgetary processes. Um, but so we're ready to welcome partners. And it was nice to have um, Mamaye Evidence for Action join this partnership. Mamaye has always been standing out. In fact, uh, even for them, it would have been so difficult to institutionalize this. Because uh, even the support we got from other partners have been, you know, isolated support. But Mama Ye, the peculiar thing about Mama Ye is that they've been persistent. They've been persistent. That right now, I can assure you right now, last time, uh, that's the state accountability mechanism activities. And even the maternal perinatal death surveillance activities, which they are actively involved, you know, have become, you know, entrenched into uh, yearly budgets about for about two years now and even this year is no exception we started with paperwork we started with a lot of trainings and the uh, paper recording and here we are today digi being digitalized thanks to our partner mama Ye, options through options we're able to effectively digitalize it so the database is one thing i think that we'll always remember mama Ye by that fact that data is now transmitted seamlessly and we can sit in the comfort of our offices and access that data. And then we share experiences. We share experiences when head of departments are called in meetings. A number of them facilitated by some of our wonderful partners, including uh, Evidence for Action, Mama Ye. The NPDSR program right now um, currently operates at state levels and within the facilities. I think the next phase will be the community um, because there are quite a few deaths that happen within the community that nobody talks about. We're never going to do enough demand creation. We need to continuously go into the communities for people to understand that they must take ownerships of themselves. There must be that healthy seeking behavior. We must be able to look out for the neighbor next door. There's no accountability. People suddenly, as well as those who have gone through this program, I realized that we didn't know what's possible. And you know what? 
Hospitals are now celebrating months when they didn't record maternal mortality. I, I, I don't. I, I mean, for me, I think that is the highest level of accountability and responsibility. And what is even more important that it's become a continuous, you know, program that is now almost automated and automatic. 